New Aims was born out of the idea that we want to develop new drugs for autism uh, disorders. Um, soon enough we realized that we could not do this alone. We needed a, a host of key stakeholders. These include pharma people, it includes academic people and it includes EMA people. And for that we were realizing it can only be done through an IMI project. The reason the academics became involved in this was because autism is such a huge problem for Europe. About one in a hundred people are affected by autism and there are no effective treatments at the moment for the core symptoms of autism. Therefore, we needed to identify new treatment targets and work together with our colleagues in industry to make that happen. Well, so the stem cell part of EU AIMS is built on a piece of technology that's pure magic. So what we're able to do now is to pluck just a single hair from uh, an autistic patient or a neurotypical patient. And from the root of that hair, we can grow a population of cells. And then using a piece of molecular magic, we can transform those ordinary hair keratinocytes into true stem cells. And these stem cells we can then use to differentiate into any cell type we like, any cell type in the body, including, of course, brain cells. And that allows us then to do a really exciting experiment because what we can do so we can grow those cells, develop those brain cells in a culture dish, and we can compare how the cells from an autistic individual grow compared to those from a neurotypical individual. And that way, we hope to be able to get an insight into what causes the disease and what brings it about. One of the key challenges for the EU AIMS project is to develop uh, and identify the best animal models of autism. And this is to help both with basic discovery and, and uh, drug discovery and drug development efforts. So two of the things that we focus on are to answer the question of what is the best animal model of autism. One of these is face validity, meaning that we want to recapitulate some of the behavioral symptoms that we see in humans in, in rodents, mice and rats. And fortunately, mice and rats are social creatures. They exhibit things like repetitive behaviors. They can have better or worse memory in many of the symptom domains that we find in autism. The second thing is that we have very unique um, methodologies and techniques to, to mutate some of the genes that have been uh, shown to be um, contributing or causal in autism spectrum disorder. So we can make very fine mutations in key genes. And this helps to establish the construct validity for those models. The next thing that we want to do is to translate all that amazing work from stem cells and rodent models into people because that's who we're trying to help. The other thing that we need to do is to train the next generation of research leaders. So what we have is some just fantastic PhD students who are leading some of the experiments that we're carrying out and one of those is Laura and she'll be speaking about what she's been doing. I have the really exciting job of translating the work of my colleagues in the lab into human studies and clinic. This is really exciting at the moment because not only have we been able to replicate the studies in the lab in humans, but also we're able to use this information to make real headway into the development of new drugs for autism. As a student as part of EU AIMS, we have access to both training in clinical and basic science from world leaders, and this is really important and valuable for career progression. also conducting a set of extraordinary and unprecedented clinical studies in EU AIMS. One of these is in infants that are at high familial risk for autism because they have an older brother or sibling with autism. In these siblings we assess brain function, cognition, we assess behavioral uh, qualities and so we are able to identify the biomarkers and the mechanisms that may precede the onset of clinical symptoms. We are also running studies with patients with monogenic forms of autism. So we estimate currently that about ten, in 10 or 20 percent of patients with autism, the condition is caused by a single gene. And now this is potentially very important for two reasons. Firstly, it offers a, as a new window or opportunity to identify treatments not only based on a person's symptoms but based on what actually causes the conditions or particular symptoms.
So one other thing we're doing as part of EU AIMS is we're trying to develop a very large clinical uh, uh, network. So at the moment we have over 80 sites from over 35 countries who um, are um, jointly collaborating with us on trying to bring together some of the uh, clinical data sets that, um, uh, that exist in Europe and people are sharing data with us and we hope to um, find out new things from having very large data sets that are pulled together from all the clinical sites that are working on those studies. Sandy, we wanted to ask you about your views from an ethics perspective around the um, work that's going on within the EU AIMS Consortium. Well. I think all of the research that's taking place under the auspices of EU AIMS is based on two fundamental assumptions that not everyone will agree with. The first is the assumption that autism is biologically explicable and the second is the assumption that autism is amenable to treatment, medical or otherwise. It's very important not to take for granted that people will agree with these assumptions and to keep making the arguments anew for why these assumptions might be valid. It's also very important for EU AIMS to talk to and keep talking to people with autism, their families, their carers and their supporters so that at the very least they can understand what research is taking place and why and the researchers can understand how autism is viewed and what the ethical ramifications of their research might be. Now three years in the project it's great to see how all these different stakeholders um, work together towards a new goal and this goal is to obviously to develop a drug. The drug discovery will take place in the companies there will be a time before it's on the market but for sure, EU Ames has made a co great contribution to this success. In only the last three years, we've made tremendous progress. My colleagues doing basic science have discovered new molecular mechanisms that might explain a proportion of autism, and they've shown that those deficits can be reversed. We've also shown within human studies that we can change brain function. What we need to do is to take that into the clinic and show that those new approaches also change behaviours for the better and that those approaches are acceptable to people with autism.